This is Twit. I'm here in an FM transmitter building, and that's a 25-kilowatt continental transmitter, and it needs a new tube in it. The tube that's in it now has gone soft. It's no longer producing full power, and it's time to replace it. If we look up here on the transmitter itself, we'll see that the power is down, which is typically what happens when these begin to get weak. We're down to, what, 77% there. So I've cranked up the filament voltage to try to milk out as much life out of the tube as I could. We're running about uh, 8.4 kilovolts at about 3.2 amperes of plate current. So we're not making full power. And it's time for a change. So I'll take you through the beginning stages of that today just to see what it looks like inside the transmitter and some of the parts that are in there. Here's the tube we're going to replace. It's a 4CX15000A. This is a rebuilt tube. It's pretty fair size. If I set a pin on top of it, just to give you an idea of scale, Maybe that'll uh, help show you how large it is. As I mentioned, this is a rebuilt tube, although it looks almost new there. Looking closer here at the uh, plate where the connection goes, you can see that has been cut and welded back several times. Also, around the bottom here of those fins, they cut the tube to remove all the elements out of it. And each time they redo this tube, that stem gets just a little bit shorter, so eventually they won't be able to rebuild it anymore. All this up here on top, uh, that around the edges you see, that's just a heat fin there that air blows through. And down here on the bottom, if we look up under it, we'll see the two connections for the filaments. There's one right there, and then the other one right around it. On the outside here, the control grid, and the screen grid connections and of course uh, it's made out of ceramic and the top of the tube the heat fins and all that is the plate now these are rebuilt and they're getting kind of old if you look close you'll notice a lot of pitting on the handle on this one right here they replate them each time but you can see where that one has has taken some abuse in the past fortunately though our plate blocker connects below that so it still looks clean down here on this area where it will be connecting to so uh, hopefully this will be a good tube I've turned off the main transmitter now and I've got the auxiliary transmitter on the air this used to be the main transmitter years ago you can see the power is down on it some uh, the engineer before me tapped down the transformers in it so it won't make full power now. Mainly what we want out of this transmitter is reliability. We need it to be there when we need it without question. So operating it at a little lower power will help ensure that. It would probably make full power if I retapped it. Over here is the antenna switch that selects between the two different transmitters and sends that signal either to the antenna on the tower or to the dummy load. You can see there goes the transmission line to those two transmitters. This is remote control, so it can be switched remotely. Now, if you follow this line down, there's a 25 kilowatt dummy load sitting right there. And beside it, uh, there are some nitrogen bottles. You know, this transmission line is hollow, so we have to keep pressure on it to keep moisture from building up inside of it and arcing over. We keep a low pressure. This is about two and a half pounds in the line and about 2,100 pounds remaining in that tank there. So a tank lasts a pretty good while as long as we don't have a bad leak in the line. As I mentioned, the transmission line is hollow, so we do keep it pressurized. This is rigid line inside the building uh, that's what broadcasters call hard line. And you can see that comes right out the side of the building there. And it runs on for about 20 feet. And then it converts over and attaches to a piece of 3-inch heliax line. 
and that goes on up the tower to our antenna. Now, I recently had a leak here, and I had to have that repaired, and it's in better shape now. I never lost pressure on it, so there was no concern about water entering the line. Now, this is a 1,000-foot tower. At the top up there is our FM antenna. We're sending approximately 25 kW from the building, and some of that's lost in the transmission line, but the gain of the antenna multiplies our power up to where we've got 100 kW vertical and horizontal effective radiated power. And that's all the time we've got to look at this today. So in our next episode, we're going to take a closer look inside the transmitter to see what's in there, and we'll pull that old tube out in preparation for putting in the new one. And uh, George? Oh. Yes, uh, Gordo? Gordo here. Will this tube uh, maybe suffice? Uh, actually, it's nothing more than oil and vinegar next time you do a salad, yeah. but it looks like a tube, huh? Well, it does. It looks more like something I'd see in an AM transmitter, I think. <laughs> maybe. I, I don't know. I don't I don't think it'll make 25 kW, though, Gordo. That would no, be my sir. concern. Though. And, you know, you look out there, you got high voltage, uh, a little over 8,000 volts. So you have to be careful out there. There's a 1,000-foot tower you're standing up under. Lots of mechanical hardware and stuff. You can get hurt out there. I'll I'll just say we won't go into any details right now, but uh, it's uh, real easy to to make a mistake or just not even make a mistake and still get injured, which is what happened to me. Uh, when you got your hand in something that's got eight thousand volts in it, and you hear something else in the room fall and make a loud noise, you tend to jerk your arm out real quick and. Uh, I, I left a little skin and hair <laughs> on uh, one of the sharp edges in that transmitter. So, uh, yeah, you, you need to be careful in there. 